Hey there guys, and Edward Berg here. Welcome to the seventh video of the MTCNA Router S version 7 playlist, where we will be talking a little bit about the Router OS license levels, what they are, what they kind of do, and why we are even talking about licenses when I mentioned in a previous video that licensing on Microtech is perpetual. Now, this is an interesting topic, even though this is more of the debate and talking side of things, we're not really going to be actually configuring anything in this video. But it is something that you need to understand when it comes to the MTC MTCNA exam as well. So let's dive into the video and talk a little bit about RouterOS licenses. Now I think the best place to start off this video is just on the Microtech documentation regarding the RouterOS license keys. Why they exist, how we can buy them, what they effectively do. So this is really just going to be that in a nutshell and i highly recommend that you do follow the pinned comment to get to the documentation here so that you can read through everything yourself briefly going over it what you need to understand is firstly microtic licenses are perpetual and it's also worth noting that you only buy the licenses for self-hosted type of solutions what do i mean by that well, if you are building your own Microtech, if you are getting that x86 image where you're installing it on like a Raspberry Pi or some mini PC, or maybe your old gaming computer or a server or something, licenses exist for that. They also exist for the virtual front where we've seen a growth like in Azure or AWS, where people might deploy stuff like cloud hosted routers in order to do stuff like VPN servers, or that access gateways. That's why you can buy those licenses to, so that you can load them onto those devices as well. <laughs> now, that is just briefly going over it, but it is very important to understand that all of the physical microtics that you buy from your distributor, those devices come preloaded with a license key, and you don't need to worry about upgrading those license keys. They've already been figured out what each device is capable of, and the appropriate license level will be loaded onto them. Now I'll show you where you can find out what license key you're using, but that's kind of like the main point that I wanna highlight there. Microtech keys, you buy them for your self-hosted type of things. It's not really for the Microtech routers. You're not gonna buy a new license for your HAP, or your CCR, or your router board, or maybe one of your CRSs. They really, really exist more or less for those type of other solutions. Now, if I scroll down to the license levels, this will actually show you that after the installation, Router S runs in trial mode, and you have 24 hours to register for a level one free demo license, or you can purchase a level four, five, or six license and paste a valid license key. It tells you what level three and why level two doesn't exist, but the main thing for the MTCNA is that you just need to understand that different licensing exists or different levels exist and what you can effectively do with them. You might get a question like, how many VPN tunnels or open VPN tunnels can you run in a license level four? Now again, the great point about Microtech examination is you do have access to the Wikipedia or to the Microtech docs. So you can come here and have a look and say, hey, <laughs> I, I, I can see from the licensing model that I am allowed to do 200 tunnels on a level three license. So they don't expect you to memorize each and every little line inside this box. It's just a nice to know or understand type of thing. But this is where you'll come and find that information. And it's very, very important just to understand the f first moment you boot up a Microtik that's running x86, it's going to run in this trial mode and you have 24 hours to register it but you've got full functionality. So this is great to just get your, your feet wet and test it out and see how Microtech in essence works. And then if you're kind of happy with it, you can go to this level one license, which besides still being able to test the features out, it's great for demonstration. So maybe you're a type of teacher or maybe you like to showcase stuff or you want to present to some people in the team how Microtech works but you necessarily don't wanna shell out some money for it. The, the demo license is really nice for that. It just kind of gets the word around with how Microtech functions. But as you can see with a demo license, you're kind of restricted to just one of everything. And if we scroll down, it's worth noting that all licenses never expire. A running license and license router can be used indefinitely, can use unlimited number of interfaces, are for one installation each, and offer unlimited software upgrades. So this is quite nice. So this just means I've seen people upgrade their routers or switches or stuff from 
15 years ago <laughs> to router is version 7 and then the stuff still works so that that's kind of what that means so marketing has this long-standing agreement almost with the community where they are still just giving us these free updates and not really forcing us to pay out of our noses for it all now it is worth noting that besides these license levels we do have chr license levels as well or license keys because this can kind of this can be a little bit confusing to some people because what's the difference between an x86 device and a chr well an x86 again is something that you can load on a device you can load it on physical hardware Whereas with the CHR, this is more or less focused on the virtual world. So you might load this on an Azure instance or AWS or something, use it as a VPN concentrator or as a gateway or what, whatever you want to use it for. But in those instances in the CHR world, whenever you load a CHR up, you turn it on, it's immediately got full access to everything. You can do everything just like with that trial license. However, the core difference is that whereas with the trial license it lasts for 24 hours the chr is indefinite but they do rate limit all of the connectivity to one megabit per second which means this is great for just testing out but you're not really going to be able to run anything in a full-fledged production environment with this however you can change the license levels to either a p1 for one gigabit on all of your interfaces or a p10 license which is 10 gigabit or the P unlimited, which you can kind of figure out what that does immediately. That just means as big as the bandwidth goes, this is what Microtik will allow you to run on the device. So I think the next thing I want to actually show you is how can you see what license level you're using on your Microtik. So if we want to see our license levels, it's as easy as just going into our system, license, and the moment you click on that, it will show you what your software ID is, it will tell you what the serial number is of the market tick, which I'm pretty sure I'm just going to be blurring out. And then we can get a license level. So here I can see this market tick is using a license level six. And if I go back to the wiki or the documentation, that just means, hey, this acts as a controller and this device can do everything. And it's basically just unlimited. I can run as many tunnels as I want or open VPN tunnels or EOIP tunnels or VLANs, etc. That's just kind of what that means. And if I go on to the other Microtik, the HAP Mini, I can have a look at the system, licenses, or license, and here I can see this device by default runs license level 4. How cool is that? Here we can see there's definitely a difference between the licenses. I think most Microtiks that you might buy for on the smaller side start at a license level 4, and the bigger Microtiks tend to gravitate towards a license level six so that's really kind of it that's how you can find your license level that's how you can also figure out what the license levels are you can also quickly see what the license level is from the command line so let me just quickly jump onto putty so i'll just jump onto my actual hap ax3 and if i have a look here i can just go into system license print and this will tell me what my software id is and my level how cool is that? So this doesn't need to be a very long video. I just really wanted to show you where you can get the information and so that you can see what the different licenses are. But it's the main point I want you to take away from this is physical marketing come with licenses. The other like x86s and CHRs, you'll be buying licenses in those instances. But all of the licenses, again, they're perpetual. They don't go away. You can keep using them the moment they're yours. So this is where I'm going to end off the video. I'd like to thank you for watching and I'll catch you in another video soon. See ya.